Good morning, land of YouTube. All right. Donnie Cosmic here with a new energy drink madness. Uh, just had coffee this morning. If I'm honest, I may have been uh, overdoing caffeine. And I feel like... Oh, I, th I guess it's building up. So I took a nap yesterday. yesterday and... I don't know, this morning I'm out at the time I intended to be out and I have a ghost pre-workout powder energy drink madness so this one's titled Teenage Mutant Turtle Ooze I'm just joking. Uh, it's just called Turtle Ooze. It does taste fantastic. And uh, it says two scoops per 10 ounces. And then you get a 20 ounce tumbler. And I was like, ah, I don't know about that. I'm not going to dilute the shit all the way down to a 20 ounce with two scoops. So I put, like my classical fashion, I put four in there because I'm kind of a mutant anyway. You know, I, I tend to be okay with overdoing everything as far as consumption-wise. I don't know, most people would agree that you buy a red line, it says only consume half a can, right? Red line energy drink or half a bottle, the little plastic ones when they came out. And everybody drinks one without even reading the label. So whatever. I mean, give me a fucking break. Why, why put it like that? I get it. You're supposed to drink half today and half tomorrow. Not me. Um, not most other people that don't read the labels even. I read the label and knew what I was doing. Uh, on that note, I've always been privileged with being able to, I don't know, consume more and be okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that it's a super bad idea. If I get really jittery and have a side effect or something like that, or then cool, I won't do it again. You know, uh, I guess I could have started out with only two. I don't know. You know I've had a lot of the uh, pre-workout powder in the past. Some stuff uh, was really really cool back in the day. It was and they probably still have it going on. Um, Anabolic Halo and that stuff really good um i mean it works super amazing in any case and in any event do not do what i'm doing just because i said to or i said i do it i didn't really say go out and do it i said read a fucking label and then if you read the label and you want to do something different do whatever you're going to do i don't know I'm not here to give advice or suggest going against what something recommends. I'm just blessed, like most people, to be able to do whatever. Hmm. So, this stuff tastes... Pretty damn amazing. It really does. The tumbler comes with like a little blender ball in it. So you don't miss any little bits. You could probably put ice in there. I'm figuring I could probably add two scoops and make a, a smoothie out of it. The flavor looks like it'll blend well with strawberry so I might make like a strawberry protein shake with uh, two scoops in there and then that'll be a perfect breakfast I just came up with that right now on the fly I didn't plan that shit it sounds good I guess there's probably a lot of people that think alike and then that would be the extra space in the in the bottle there 
Well, we'll see what it's like, huh? I know what the uh, ghost energy drinks in a can are like. And then I know that this is uh, the, the pre-workout powder that I could have purchased without caffeine. So there's two different versions. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a mild tingly effect throughout my whole body. And I should be able to jog back from Sebastopol. <laughs> like Go Go Gadget Donnie, right? Under the influence of turtle ooze, I will jog all the way back. I gotta be careful because I don't want to injure myself. My left leg is a little sore from doing a little bit more of a intense like full speed. Uh, I was I wasn't really jogging, I was like full speed prancing almost really propelling off my feet and my oh I don't know what muscle this is called anatomy 101 somebody fill me in the shinny shin shin muscle using my uh, toes to springboard off of the ground on my left side I pretty much injured it a little bit it's stressed out right now it hurts so I'm just walking at a, a mild pace not even fast and I'm out here doing my three and a half one way and three and a half back. I find that when I don't do this, <clears throat> I really kind of miss it. And then somewhere else during the day, I'll fill in with a, you know, a walk. If it's not my other walk, that's a little bit shorter of a route. Uh, what I end up, I'll end up somewhere and walking and getting the same kind of uh, fitness level. And then I, I hit the weights at home. And I'm happy because my chest is starting to show improvement. You know? Uh, I can do that Hulk, <laughs> not Hulk smash. I can do the, uh, <laughs> that's funny. I can't do the rock like the rock does with the peck pop of love and the journey to the center of the earth, but I can still bounce my pecs. And that's satisfying. It makes me feel good. Uh, I, I've always been able to like independently control those muscles, but now I've got a little bit more mass going on and I'm converting a lot of the excess body weight that I had, the fat, it's getting converted into muscle and mass. Um, I'm eating right with a pretty good amount of protein during the day so my body can convert it and shit for a long time I was on the uh, like the caveman diet pretty much just eating whatever I wanted but never exercising and I was doing a lot of driving so all of that excess you know got stored around my body in the wrong areas according to what the wrong areas would look like on a human body. It's not super attractive. Some women would say it is a dad body. Well, some women are also attracted to dad bodies. Uh, I'm gonna have that dad body that's fucking toned and fit. And I don't know about the washboard abs yet. I'll get there. To me, that requires a lot of discipline. And um, I am going to be in a, a gym environment coming up, possibly daily towards the end of the day to like cap off. You know, I start off with a high metabolism due to a walk. And then at the end of the day, I start winding down and I'll do some muscle training. It's going to leave me tired and ready for bed. Maybe sore so my shit can heal during the night. I think that sounds like a good good idea. At least three nights out of the week. If not four. And it'll leave me... I think four would be good. And then uh, leave me three days to regenerate. I'll do four on, three off at the gym. Sounds good. 
Oh, a lot of this is figuring out um, our body types and what what agrees with us. I think as we go through life, we kind of naturally do that anyway. We know what our body likes. We know when we eat something, how we feel. And um, we, we really do ultimately find all that stuff out at a certain point. Now, you could pay a lot of money and have somebody tell you and define you that. And they could be wrong, too. Ultimately, we are our own best doctors. And our own best, basically, everything. If we really want to look at it and get smart, we can learn so much about ourselves through everybody else. All the information we've ever fucking had. It's right here at our fingertips. And, uh... We can learn about ourselves by studying what goes on inside of us. Taking that to the grand stage of observing how our bodies react with certain foods and substances and chemicals and concoctions and fucking workout materials and what exercise does, producing endorphins and how we feel later. Yeah. I think the risk of putting yourself through the experimentation phase of getting to know yourself is very much worth the reward of some kind of crazy good looking body. There's a lot of people out that are naturally gifted with a really good athletic body. Myself, when I was younger, fuck, I, I couldn't gain weight to save my life. I ate everything. I had such a fucking high metabolism. I would always burn it off. I ran everywhere. My legs are fucking strong. Right now, there's no leg machine at the gym that I can't move all the weight. And rep, like, more... I mean, like, it doesn't matter. My legs are strong as fuck. And, uh, I'm proving it by being out here. You know, this is basically a leg exercise and mild cardio. I'm not really getting my heart rate up. But this is to get my joints back in shape due to a long period of laziness. Uh, and I'm sure that as I go through and I feed my body correctly and I nourish my body, my joints will say thank you, regenerate, and... I'll be able to jog all the way to Sebastopol and back with no problem soon. I'm looking at like a three to six month timeline where I can jog all the way out and back. So seven mile jog in the morning, which will cut my time in, in half pretty much. I'll take about, uh, oh, about 50 minutes out and then 50 minutes back, roughly walking. And, um, it's, a, it's not too bad. It's like... Like... Uh, you know, it's like 18, 16, 18 minutes uh, a mile. That's a, a mediocre slow place to walk a mile. I remember back to school. Fuck, I mean, back in school... I ran a mile in 4 minutes and 16 seconds in the 6th grade. Just crazy. I was like one of the fastest kids in my whole middle school. But then everybody got bigger, got longer legs. I stayed a midget, 4 foot 10, 88 pounds all the way through high school. Uh, naturally, there's people that got bigger and were faster. And um, I also had some trauma happen. But we won't get into that. I just want to focus on physical fitness. Because it's really important to make yourself a priority so your body don't fail. And um, this is kind of a new approach due to the ghost theme. And the fact that it's technically workout powder. You know? Uh, I will be utilizing some weights. When I get done with my walk. Yes. So learning about yourself. Very important. 
Me, I'm aware that if I consume sugar after not consuming sugar, really cutting sugar out of my life has been a very great thing. Everywhere you look nowadays in our modern society, sugar is crammed into fucking everything. Even seasonings have a lot of sugar. And then I look at my body's reaction when I took it out of my out of my diet for the most part. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of sugar here and there. Plant sugar is different, especially when you're eating the whole fruit. You get all that fiber and everything with it. Um, I mean, it's still sugar. It's just not refined sugar. I mean, the excess refined sugar is what's going to kill you. Uh, known as white death, right? Uh, I attribute tooth decay, all kinds of physical health problems to sugar. I take it out of my diet almost religiously not touching any sugar, right? And guess what happens? I feel better. I'm more motivated. I'm more clear-headed. And then uh, I get an accidental binge on sugar. The next day, I fucking wake up with a migraine feeling dopey not motivated lethargic gross and I attribute that to the sugar intake the day before so I'm watching my body and its reaction to certain things I can only wish the same for everybody else I think as we become more aware of our surroundings in life it, it comes from being more aware of our physiology and our body first so our awareness level with ourselves gets raised and we heighten our awareness. And then our awareness level around us gets raised. And so there's all these different awareness levels in life. I look at them at stages of human development and growth all around me. And... Uh, You know, I wouldn't give up myself for anyone. Isn't that cool? I just, I know that at my stage of physical development and awareness level, I wouldn't give up on me for nobody. Some people alter their course of existence permanently for another human being. Sometimes that's good. I agree. I mean, you know, deep down in the back of my mind, I'm looking for some kind of ultimate partner, possibly. And maybe it's just going to be somebody that's going to be so beneficial. And I'm going to benefit them as well. That's the idea, is to get into some kind of relationship where you do have another half. And no matter what, you just benefit the fuck out of each other. Or, or, I've already made babies. I could end up myself single for the rest of my life and just dating and having fun there's two different avenues i can go down ideally yeah i'd love to find some woman that i can share the rest of my life with like a, a friend a playmate a lover this really isn't knowing about myself and exercise it kind of has something to do with exercise <laughs> come on i'm all sexercise baby because <laughs> when I get that feeling, I need sexual healing. That took a turn real quick, huh? Um, God, I'm ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so the idea is knowing more about myself and then maybe being able to branch off into finding a partner or not. The more I know about myself and the more aware I become of everything around me and the more knowledge I cram into my head, I realize that it's just getting tougher and tougher to find somebody that's like me. So what do I do? Do I find somebody that's willing to compliment me? That's one avenue. That's one, one angle. I would look for... Naturally, I think we all look for ourselves in another human being. But then we find some kind of opposite attract type bullshit. And then you end up in a, a new learning lesson in life. To where... We learn 
from our partners more about ourselves, ultimately. We could try to blame everything off on the other person and say, oh yeah, it was them that did all this. Uh, with my mindset, I don't really agree with that wholly. But I do see the fact that I have, I have made babies. I do want to make more babies. Ideally, I'd love another son and daughter. Kids are amazing. The whole phase of shaping little humans is amazing. Now, would I have the amount of time that I need to be effective with four children to be in their life enough to where I really am an influence in their life with whatever else is going on in my life? Probably. I, th I believe I can, I can do that because there's different stages of development with children that they need their own freedom and space. My daughter's eight, going to be nine in February next year. My son is four, going to be five coming up next month. I got a little five-year-old. He's at the journey beginning of his school career. Just had his first day the other day. How cool. It was amazing. He's at the start of a, a little productive career known as become a mass-produced society of mass-produced commercialisms within a mass production of productionisms. I just made all that, all those words up. Okay, well, my kids also have been trained with different viewpoints and different esoteric beliefs and different knowledge bases, basically from the beginning of their time here on Earth. I never agreed with sheltering anything from my children, so I told them exactly how the world is. I let them go out and see it, but I also taught them a different viewpoint that not a lot of people get to actually physically go and learn. There was knowledge that I was taking in and learning at my phase of development that I shared openly with my children. These are psyche tools. Uh, I mean, understanding the mind. I was teaching my children that. So what kind of powerful little creations do I have on my hands? And then I see their phases of development. And I see how amazing they are. My daughter does want to become a cop. She just told me the other day. And I was like, that's good because I had it in my head, kid. I mean, I really do see her as being a lady police officer and not being a really good career for her. If she changes her mind at some point, I'm going to roll with it. Because I'm here to support my children and their endeavors as long as it's healthy and beneficial. If they are not going down a healthy path... I'm not going to get codependent and support them into some kind of ill health. I will, however, know, make sure that if there's any kind of harm that they're doing, that they know it and that there's justice on the other side of it. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I would, I would not see that with my children, not the way I've raised them, with uh, a better set of morals and most people would ever actually graduate from into life with a really good set of morals behind everything. Uh, a lot of people go outside right now and they take the society morals and they apply it and they run with it. Half the time people are lying to themselves, lying to others. So don't lie to yourself about your fucking fitness, bitch. <laughs> don't fucking do it. If you are procrastinating with your physical health, your body... And you're not out doing something about it? Make the fucking time. You have the time. I don't care what your life is putting you through. The human body really only needs about five hours of sleep. You can survive on three and a half. And if you're healthy enough with the right stuff in your body, your body's going to thrive in that environment. You can get up no matter what you think you got going on. You can get up before you got to go do it. And you can throw in an hour or two of exercise. Every morning I take two hours. 
I can convert those two hours into whatever I want now. Uh, I mean, I, clearly, I've just made the time, and the time is there. So it doesn't matter what else is going on. You got to be willing to sacrifice things for yourself, for your own self-benefit. Everything else will align properly once we are our own best priority. And I am a firm believer that personal growth and self-love in a form of first physical health and mental health is going to transform everybody's life rapidly for the better. The bettering of society, the bettering of fucking everything. So, uh, you know, I have some very good instilled morals and viewpoints that may not be a very popular uh, topic or viewpoint. One is truth. <laughs> not a lot of people are willing to be truthful first with themselves and then with everybody else. Then, so we have honesty and integrity. Integrity will be doing the truthful thing behind closed doors when it's just you. So you're being honest with yourself. Light and love. Typically, if you think about light and you hold something up to the light, you can see through it. When you're little, you take the flashlight, you hold it up to your hand, you can see the light through your hand. You can even see through yourself, right? So, bringing things to light is a classic statement for, you know, bringing things that were in the dark out to be the exposed things. Whatever it is, topics, honesty coming from a place of being in it dishonest or incapable of honesty it's going to be painful and ugly a lot of people when they're confronted with the truth see it like an attack so it's a war and no one really likes going to war even though they've been at war their whole life right so ultimately the worst case scenario is people have been at war with themselves their whole entire fucking life hiding in their own shadows from themselves and then, technically, they meet somebody like me. Now, I, I do have friends that are like-minded. Maybe not as outgoing sometimes, I see. Some, some people are just more of a silent observer, and they watch the bullshit happen, and they only affect where they deem fit. Me, I'm like, if it's in front of me, I'm going to fuck with it. Whatever. It's, it's kind of an ugly thing. People that meet me that are really dishonest end up meeting a wall and they're like what the fuck is wrong with this guy and they're looking at me like there's something wrong with me and I'm like I love you and they're like what the fuck so with that in mind good morning, good morning. with that in mind it's uh, kind of a crazy scenario <laughs> bringing things to light and then love what does love look like Love looks like doing exactly what someone needs or a relationship needs, even if it's not the popular thing to do. Also, with a measured amount of harm that's going to be involved, because sometimes love is a discipline form where I know that doing something is going to cause some kind of harm because it's ultimately the person that's going to be doing the self-harm. So I've stood in front of somebody very calmly, not even aggressively facing them, not postured, hands relaxed in front of me. And I've had them tell me that I'm super angry and that I'm yelling at them as they're yelling at me and they are super angry. And I thought, what kind of sickness does this person have? And as I did not budge and went through that, this person finally de-escalated. And it happened with another person. And then it happened with another person. So whatever I've got going on, I'm bringing this out in people, right? And it's my own self-satisfaction that I know I have the courage to face these situations and to stand firm. It's fucking crazy. Trust me. I've had people right behind me as witnesses and they go, I've never seen you get angry, dude. And I'm like, well, 
I'm just confused. Why was this individual saying that I was angry? What's going on in their head? Do they really believe it? Or are they making it up like they're full of their own bullshit? Because somehow they feel threatened. <laughs> now, if it's just alpha state, alpha mentality, alpha mind, and then they are threatened physically by my presence, that could be one thing. Uh, I do carry a lot of presence relating to that, and it's attractive. But maybe it's just loving myself, my health. And I had a, a mantra, love, fame, wealth, wealth, health, happiness, for a long time. It was not really a mantra so much as affirmations that I would repeat. But it became a mantra because, you know, a mantra is something that you repeat in a tunnel. And so I would constantly go over it in the back of my mind. And now I walk into these phases of my human development. And I got to cut the video short at 35 because it's not going to upload. The damn thing won't let me do anything. I guess I need high-speed internet at home. So, if you're curious about physical fitness or getting back on track with yourself, I have a group of friends. Uh, and if you're local to Sonoma County, that's going to be better. But um, my friend Jessica Zaber, she has a program that includes uh, a product that is very, very beneficial to helping people get back on track and lose weight. It's also a mindset. It's also a lot. Now, if you're the type of person that can't go out and figure out things for yourself, and you're not going to learn on your own, your own body type, and all these things that everybody else talks about and does their best to deliver as a source of income, as well as just, you know, the pure satisfaction to help another human being out, that's the idea. Because I know my friend Jessica... She just really wants to ultimately help humans out and have this as a byproduct. So she has a product. Her name is Jessica Z-A-B-O-R. And you can go online to her website at facebook.com. You can friend her and you can ask her about her diet program if you want to call it that. It's more like an overall health program, I believe. And uh, Davina is also a very good life coach with this department of coaching. Um, but the thing is, or you can message me directly if you want me to get you set up with them. And if I was on my A game, I'd remember the name of the product, but I have not tried the product yet. I have just seen its results with other people. And so that's something that I could almost get behind immediately because I've seen a very good positive result with other people in person due to one of retraining of the mind and then, you know, the, the right shit coming in for the right body types. Now, I would encourage everybody else to also get to know your body type, to research yourself with scientific measures doing things and finding out more about yourself but i'm very confident that jessica and davina have a good product and it can transform one's life uh, especially if it's somewhere related to a lack of motivation um, then join a group somebody that's going to hold you accountable somebody that's going to get your ass up and get your ass out and, you know, honestly, I don't know who gets up early in the morning anymore. I don't really, I did a, a little bit of a study. I sent on a bunch of good mornings really early, and then I got back responses at different layers of the day. And it doesn't mean that that's when that person got up. It's when that person got up and then finally had time to look at their phone. Now, if it's a mother with a child, she could have been up an hour and a half prior. Who knows? Point is, is... When they look at their phone, that's when they would have been able to really be available for some kind of walk. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm out the door at 540, who's really going to be able to join me? I don't see anybody on this path. If I come out here at, at 7, there's plenty of people. If I 
Come on at 540. I don't start seeing people pop up until closer to seven o'clock on my way back. And uh, ultimately it makes for a really peaceful time walking. It uh, makes for a lot of alone time. And I do value that. Um, sometimes I like to get into conversations. Clearly if I'm making a video and I went past my 35 minute mark almost, I gotta wrap this thing up. If I'm making a video with my head in a video, it's hard to stop and just make a conversation, right? So I can't tell you that it's a good thing that I make videos every day, but I do. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up and I would love some comments if anybody is curious about getting to know themselves better and wants to meet with my friends that have a walking group as well and basically a program